Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Pleasure to call you that. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I should say thank you to our former chairman, who it has been a real pleasure working with, and I look forward to working with in the future. Uh, Governor, congratulations, and thanks so much for meeting with me yesterday. Um, I especially want to thank you for offering to come out and take a look at our national labs in New Mexico. You did that of your own accord. I usually have to ask someone to do that, so thank you. Uh, you said in your prepared testimony that we in America cannot leave our people behind, and I think we, we all agree with that sentiment and want to figure out what is the best way to actually uh, achieve that. You know, the energy sector is changing incredibly rapidly right now, and that means incredible new careers. Um, we just broke ground on the single largest single build wind farm in the history of the country in central New Mexico. Uh, but it also means job losses into the future uh, in traditional fossil energy. And we, we have to recognize those changes that are occurring. Uh, coal has experienced a dramatic decline over the last decade. And oil and gas is now entering what appears to be a structural rather than a cyclical de decline. Uh, and that's separate from any of the policy or climate change concerns. So, you know, I, I believe that the people who work in these sectors today and in the past are like our nation's energy veterans. Uh, they're men and women who have powered this incredible nation for the last half century and gave their working lives to that goal. Um, what investments will we need to make, specifically in oil and gas workers and in their communities, to ensure that these hardworking Americans are not left behind? Thank you for the question. I mean, this, this is, um a chicken and egg question that we faced in Michigan. Do you train people for jobs that are not there yet? It's much better to get a job provider and train somebody for a specific job. And so this is what the, um, the efforts of the Biden administration are looking at. What are the economic assets that states have that can create economic clusters that will make them successful and then be able to partner with universities, et cetera, to train, or um, you know, unions to be able to train people for good jobs in their states so they don't have to move somewhere, but every state has something to offer. You, you, you describe the big wind farm. Why aren't we building these wind turbines near the wind farms in America? We should not be importing those huge, I mean, the materials work that is being done at the Department of Energy on lightweight materials, that can be used as assets to create wind turbines that are, that are larger and give people a chance to be able to work in that industry. Bottom line is place-based strategies are critical for areas that have been left behind, and that's exactly what the executive order from Joe Biden today has put together to fix. So this should be an easy one. Uh, will you commit to working with me to create a place-based plan for investing in and diversifying my state's oil and gas producing communities so that those constituents do not get left behind? Yes. Thank you. Um, it's hard because history has shown that hanging on to the past, frankly, is very <laughs> politically expedient. What I've seen is that doesn't always um, and usually fails those communities in the long run. We have to make those forward-thinking investments or we're going to see those job losses and they're going to be worse and they're going to be sooner. So I look forward to working with you. This is not going to be easy, but it's incredibly important. Um, one, of the, one of the fastest ways, obviously, to drive the decarbonization and the, to drive the carbon pollution out of vast swaths of our economy is to begin electrifying practically everything. You've talked a lot about electrical, uh, electric transportation. You know, today it's possible to electrify broad swaths of our economy that were not, that, that were run with fossil generation in the past. Heating uh, water, heating and space cooling, uh, transportation are just a few of those examples. Importantly, if we do that, it creates an enormous number of blue collar jobs, quality careers in local communities. Um, how can you harness the expertise of DEO, of the Department of Energy, to accelerate that transition and accelerate the electrification of those parts of our economy that um, the technology is there, but there are all these friction points? Yeah, I, I appreciate this question because one of, uh, you know, again, the 
the executive order that was issued today also created um, a requirement that we lead by example in the federal government, and it is the Department of Energy that will be working on making sure that we are buying American, creating demand in America for American-made products, and that we are deploying them on the vast um, complexes inside of the federal government. That creates an opportunity for American companies to build these products that will electrify our entire, um, our country in, in ways where we haven't seen that before. So I think that number one, and very quickly, that can happen uh, through the lead by example uh, effort that the Biden administration has. And I just wanna say that um, the signing of the executive order this week on Buy American um, is, is huge. It is huge for the, the signal, the demand signal that America is serious about buying these products, but if you are a company manufacturing something, if they're windmills, you've got to make them in America. And so locating them in places that have been hurting, that's going to be our strategy. How do we get them to locate there as we electrify? Thank you, Senator. Uh, at this time, we have Senator Rono. Uh, 